Hello folks, welcome to the Landhammer stream. We are back with DMVPN Labs, this time phase two. And we're gonna do some phase two EIGRP and OSPF. So let's pull up the agenda for tonight's stream. We have got, yeah, CCIE Labin. We're on, uh, we're still on Twitch, like in Twitch. Love the chat interaction. Uh, so put, first initial reports are the chat is better on Twitch, which is one of the main reasons I swapped to it. Uh, I had some discussion on Instagram with someone. Uh, he's considering also la streaming some labs. And he was talking about doing YouTube. I, I Wiz Kid, I think is his uh, name. If you want to check him out. Actually, let me post that here. We started our conversation on Instagram. And many of you may know if you're following the channel that, you know, uh, I think even uh, Demetrios, some others, you know, found me on Instagram first. Not sure how that happened because it seems I have more followers on Twitter than Instagram. In fact, I think I have definitely way more followers on Twitter than Instagram, but you know. That's why I do the different platforms. Uh, even though a lot of the info is repeated, like, you know, I'll do a screenshot and I'll post the same thing on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. But there are unique things that I post on Instagram that I do not post on Twitter. Um, not many, but I want to do more of that. But yeah, let me find this. Uh, I think it was iWizKid. Let me just pull up Twitter here. Because we may just give him a shout out here. And he had some sort of poll. You know how in Twitter you can do a poll? Um, yeah, let me find this here. So I think, yeah, I think he did some sort of poll earlier. And I was like, yeah, man, if you want to do, you know, we need more people. It'd be great to see more people who are, yeah, I can't find it. I, I may post it later. Uh, anyway, it would be great to, to see more people streaming and utilizing social media in the networking community, CCIE community. Um, I think it's great. Yeah. If you want to start, you know, start your own YouTube channel, uh, start your own uh, stream. And, you know, there's no competition here, at least not on my part. The more streamers, the better. The more, the merrier. We can share notes. We can actually stream together. We can chat on Discord. I'm all for that, man. I'm all for the interaction. So, yeah, go for it is what I told him. And uh, I, I hope to see more people, you know, get involved and, and do it. So hopefully that'll be the case as time goes on. I think it will. Um, for example, in Router Gods, I know that uh, they, they right now we're using Hangouts. And I haven't done too much of it. I, I've joined a few Hangout sessions. You know, we're talking about Google Hangouts. Which is good. I mean, you can do audio, you can do screen sharing, and you can do side by sides and all that. It's pretty, you know, it's a good uh, format. But I think that the gaming community is kind of driving the technology in a lot of ways. They're, in some ways, the gaming t community is sometimes ahead of the curve when it comes to social media and interact live interactions. So I would love one day to. I think it'll evolve that way eventually, where. You're gonna, as long as it's, you know, not NDA things, not your, that you're violating NDA agreements, you know, like uh, if you've taken the lab or if you've taken the written exam and now you're labbing that out. Like if you just announced to the world, uh, I just took the lab, I failed, and now I'm working on what I had in the lab that I missed. Well, obviously, you know, you're not going to stream that. That's breaking of NDA. You're not going to show also... You know, someone, if your buddy develops a lab, he's like, I'm only sharing this with you. You're not going to show that on a stream publicly or, you know, and, and I try to be discreet too with doing I and E and other things like. But anyway, I think it's going to grow and I think it's going to allow you see gamers, for example. You know, if someone does, it's rare that people can actually do the, a lab at the same time. Uh, but if that does arise, I think Twitch and Discord is a great format to do that. You see that with gamers. Like, they'll all go into the game at the same time, and they broadcast it on Twitch so everybody can watch, and they use Discord for voice chat. So eventually we'll get there. But uh, I digress a little bit. Uh, let's look at our 
uh, agenda for the day. I have a uh, rest in peace, Dolores O'Riordan from Cranberries, uh, passed away. I think she's 46. So, you know, tribute to her. Uh, great, you know, I enjoyed a lot of her music. That's kind of my era, quote unquote. Yes, I'm an older guy. Uh, and also, you know, for those who, United States in a way, it was an official Martin Luther King um, uh, observance day. So, um, Monday motivation. Yeah, I will say uh, I got got my behind beat up in the gym today. And I've been feeling it all day long. Um, rough workout. So I had to get motivated. And this motivated me. I was struggling a little bit. I watched some of the INE videos earlier. And I was miss, uh, I'm missing some clarity on these DMVPN phases. So this article was perfect. I found this through Google, just doing a Google search. But anytime, just, just to call out folks, and many of you already know this, but anytime you see the name Peter Lepikoff, I don't know if that's the correct pronunciation. Sorry, Peter, if that's the case, but... Um, he, you know, is, I think he developed a lot of the INE uh, advanced technologies labs, at least with maybe version four. And some of those, of course, has been, have been rewritten, but he, he has developed a lot of that material. He may be, there's rumors that he may be still involved with INE as, you know, maybe owner or, or stakeholder. I don't know. But basically the point is if you see Peter... Lapikoff, and you see a blog entry by him, look no farther. You are good to go. And that was the case here. So I, I was trying to distinguish between the different phases of DMVPN, well, particularly one and two. This article here, DMVPN Explained, is all you need. It was perfect. It was perfect. And I almost finished reading it. I got right before firing up the stream, I've got all it, and it, and it got me motivated, you know, it got me, I was like, okay, this is cool. Okay, now we understand. Now let's go hit the lab. Motivation attained. So good stuff here. Uh, he talks, at the end, I didn't get all the way down. I read most of this, most of the screenshots, of course, and I did not read all the responses, although these, these get interesting sometimes with Peter. Um... The way he clarifies, he obviously knows the subject super well. But he talks about, I think, which is what's important with these phases one and two, which are have been deemed obsolete by Brian McGann, and I tend to agree with that. But what is talked about here is the um, CEPH and fast switching and process switching. And the differences. And he has a scenario here how you can really see the difference if you were to turn CEF off, which we cannot do, by the way, in our train. Well, in the iOS uh, L images, I think that's what they're called, we're using it in viral, you cannot turn off CEF. So we cannot even do this. But it was interesting to see the explanation here and the screenshots of what happens when you do. And it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. Fortunately, though, CEF, of course, is really important. You would never do that in a large uh, implementation because uh, you turn off CEF and you have a hub with hundreds or even thousands of spokes and you have to leverage process switching, you're done for. And Brian McGann talks about that as well. So that's one of the meat chunks. The other meat chunk I have is it may be left over yesterday. I'm not sure. Uh, if you have not described, uh, subscribed to Demetra Fiegel's uh, Twitch channel, which I posted yesterday, definitely need to do that. Uh, I, I subscribed to him uh, yesterday. So I'm a subscriber. Love his channel. It's great. He has a Discord, a new Discord server too. So definitely check that out and join it if you have not already. And he's also a member of uh, my channel's uh, Discord server and posts in there. He's a CCIE, and I think he's speaking... At a Cisco event, he just uh, tweeted that he arrived. Um, which country was that? It's a European country that he just arrived to, to, to give talk. So, a celebrity. Um, anyway, I also included this RFC. This is the NHRP original. This is old. I think it's 1998. 
RC 2332 kind of explaining uh, NHRP and how that works. Also, so you're aware, I did post, I fixed the Streamlabs stuff yesterday. So if you do, uh, if you do follow the channel, for example, now, let me uh, pull this up here, folks. Just a little business, get out of the way before we start. Anyway, if you go to my channel, um, I've got a link here now to a donation link. Again, I'm not expecting donations, but hey, if people want to, if this is really valuable to you, and you want to see improvements to the stream, feel free to donate. All that will go towards stream improvement. It doesn't go anywhere else. So I've got that up and running, and uh, there you go. All right, let's get into this lab, folks. This is, again, the DMVPN. We're going to do phase two, and I'm going to talk about that. This is the revised, uh, my own version of the INE topology map, which is linked. But the Peter's article really helped me to distinguish between phase one and phase two. It's very simple. And essentially, it has to do with a couple of things. There's a couple of factors. But the principal one, in, and I did this wrong in my labs, I realized yesterday. I, I did this slightly incorrect. But typically, the way this is done is, so let's say you have, uh, let's draw here what's going on. Oh, the color. I have no color. So let's say you want to do a, like this skinny. Yeah. So if you're going to do a, um, so this is our topology, right? And so this is the hub. And these are the spokes. The phase one means that, first of all, you are never going to form a tunnel, a GRE tunnel, between this from spoke to spoke. You will in phase two, right? But the configuration for spoke to, uh, on the spoke routers is you have a, a normal GRE tunnel like you would normally have, you know, typical GRE tunnel uh, at the spoke. And that's, that's one of the main differences between well, uh, phase one and phase two. And then what you're also going to do is in EIGRP, for example, you're going to typically in phase one, all you're going to do is send a default route here. But in phase two, uh, these spokes will actually discover, they will, will actually exchange routes between each other. And the um, typically EIGRP, for example, in phase one, uh, when he sends this route, he's going to change the next hop, right? So if router four sends a route to router five, router five will advertise that to router one, but he changes the next hop to zero, 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 zero. That is in phase one. Uh, not true in phase two. So phase two will actually set the next hop to be uh, router four in this case. And router five does not modify it. And that is what we're going to see right now. The big difference with uh, phase two. So if I have to li list these out, and there are probably more, but we've got um, in phase two, I know that's big guys, I'll fix it. Um, again, in phase two, you're talking about, whoa, not that small. Um, and we'll take EIGRP, for example. Um, we have spoke the spoke and we also have um, hub does not modify next hop so two big changes here um, with phase two and that's what we're going to do tonight so on the this is one thing I did wrong yesterday and I didn't notice it somehow from the configuration but uh, for example on your spoke router I did uh, the tunnel type is GRE um, multicast or multipoint, I think. Um, I should not have done that on the spokes. We will do that today for phase two. So um, let's pull up the requirements then on this particular lab and bring over the chat. If anybody wants to say hello. 
So requirements and configs. And I've got some of this config left over. I'm going to try to do it by hand again. It's probably going to be the same. We're going to change this to DMVPN phase two with the Edge RP. So let's see here. Excuse me. I'm hot and cold tonight. I don't know why. Got the fan on and this. But it is uh, kind of cold right now. But here are the requirements. So I'm going to, this is my disclaimer guys, disclaimer section of the stream, that uh, at least right now I'm working on primarily um, out of the INE workbook. So the lab I'm about to do is from there. I'm not gonna show the workbook. I'm just going to kind of paraphrase some of the things and work through it. But if you want to do this lab yourself, definitely check out the workbook yourself. It is listed in the description. So, all right, DM, what we're going to do here is DM, DMVPN phase two network. Uh, routers one through four are the spokes. Router five is a hub. And next top server. Okay, all this part is the same. Yep, all this part is the same so far. Then the routing protocol is going to be IGRP. All links passive except the tunnel, that's right. Advertise loopbacks. <clears throat> disable split horizon. And then what we also want to do here is disable next top on the hub that this is a key that makes this a uh, phase two tunnel okay then uh ipsec yes we will use encryption okay so yeah all the rest of this is the same okay so let's do it uh, i'm going to try to do what i can i'm going to hide this and we're going to try to configure what i can uh by I wrote here. I've already fired up the topology. The topology is DMVPN, is the topology file. And we've got viral running. I'm going to shut down these other routers. We don't need them. Six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. We don't need you. And we don't need the switches in this lab either. So we're going to just save some resources not that we're hurting for resource or anything resources or anything but router one two three four five and let's go ahead and start our configuration first to do the dmvpn all right all right so we're going to do interface t0 Tunnel, uh, well, let's do IP address 1.0.5. Um, we're going to do tunnel source. We don't need interface there, right? And tunnel mode, Jerry, not grep. Jerry multipoint. Yeah. Okay. IP NHRP network ID is one. IP NHRP authentication is NHRP auth. IP NHRP map. Do we do that here? Yeah, we need to map the NHRP. So this will be the 15105 and then the NBMA is, uh, what is this address? Let's see, do show IP interface, yeah, IP NHRP 
map one five one zero dot five and then one six nine two five four one hundred dot five. So this is the overlay and the underlay, right? Logical and in BMA. Okay, IP and HRP. No, we just do tunnel key of two. And then IP MT 1400, IP TCP adjust MSS 1360. Um, <laughs> what else? Do show run interface T0. Let's see how I did. Hey, I think we got it. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to do this uh, now on. Let's see, do we have to do. Okay, we have to do multi address family. So, yeah, I think that this will be configured under EIGRP. So let's go ahead and do EIGRP. Router. EIGRP DMVPN address family IPv4 uni autonomous system 100 and we're going to say network uh, actually AF interface default and passive interface and no next hop self. Okay, that's the part that we need to make sure. Actually, we don't need to do it there. Uh, we need to do it under tunnel interface. So AF interface, tunnel zero, no passive interface, no next hop self. And no split horizon. Yeah, that's important. Uh, what else? Networks. Network 150.1.0.0. Uh, let's do this. Yeah. Okay. Advertise loopback, right? Disable split horizon. Okay. All right, I think that's good. Now let's do our encryption. Wow, let's see what I can remember of this. Crypto, Isocamp, um, Policy, 10. Encryption, AES, what are we doing here? 128. Yep. Uh, hash, SHA-256, uh, group 16. Authentication pre share. Then we do crypto ISA KMP key and DMVPN underscore PSK. And the address is 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 on on the hub. Right? And then crypto IPsec transform set ESP AES 256 SHA 512 and we want to use ESP AES 256 ESP SHA 512 HMAC hey, hey got it mode transport crypto IP IPsec profile, DMVPN underscore profile, set transform set sweet. We're cruising today, man. Cruising. So that's uh, crypto. And then we just need to add it to the tunnel. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, interface T0. Tunnel protection IPsec profile. Man, I'm proud of myself. Got all that. All right. Now we need to go to, let's start with router one. 
Before we go too crazy, we're just going to get router 1 to work. So first we do our tunnel, interface T0, IP address 15102, tunnel mode Jerry multipoint, because it is going to be a phase 2 here. So uh, then we do NHRP network idea 1, IP NHRP network. ID of one IP NHRP map. Um, this is going to be. Oh, we forgot something on the. Thank. Do show run interface T zero. Yes, we forgot something very important. IP NHRP map. Multicast. Dynamic. Yes, boom. And we need that here too, I believe. Multicast dynamic. Yes, we do. IP NHRP map zero two <clears throat> and one six nine two four one hundred dot two. IP NHRP map. No, we need NHS next top server. Uh, this will be one five one zero five. Okay, good deal. What else? IP NHRP authentication. Uh, tunnel key two. IP MD 1400. IP TCP adjust MSS 1360. Now, something else. What else do we need here? Let's refer to our article here. I got someone in Discord. Cool. Yep, people chatting about Labs and Discord. If you if you all have not joined Discord, check it out. Get labbing help. Get cool links. Well, I thought for sure I had opened this, but maybe I had not. Let me open it up again. Oh, here it is. The MVP and explained. So this is Peter's article. And he has a configuration here for phase two. Really good article. Plus, he's how many CCIE? Four. This was written a while ago, but he has more than that now. And see here, he's got the sample configurations, which is awesome. Of course, we don't have access to this during the lab, but uh, we should know how to find it. Okay, IP next top self. IP, yeah, we did that. Okay, spoke router. I like this. Authentication, multicast, map, NHS. We did that. Source, we didn't do tunnel source. Tunnel source is just zero one one hundred. Uh, keep one to put interface, and then yeah. Okay, I think that's it. So we've got that. We need to do now EDRP, and look, the tunnel came up. We won't be able to communicate because isocamp's turned on. But let's do yeah, EIGRP, EIGRP next. Router, EIGRP, MVPN, address, IPv4, Uni, Autonomous System 100. And we're going to do AF interface default, passive interface. Uh, what else? That's it, yeah, AF interface T0, no passive interface, and no split horizon, and no next hop self. I don't think we have to disable this here. On the spoke. 
This doesn't even matter, actually. Yeah, so all we need here is now is network uh, 150.1.0.0. Okay, that is ERGRP, no adjacency though yet, of course, uh, because we need to do the crypto policy. So crypto isocamp policy 10. Our encryption is AS128, SHA-256, authentication, pre-share. Group 16, then crypto IPsec. Uh, why, why am I losing this here? Crypto IPsec transform set ESP AES 256, SHA 512, ESP AES, ESP SHA 512. It looks like the SHA. AES tends to be enumerated with a space. I guess that's because of the different uh, AES encryption types, maybe? I don't know. But SHA usually get, seem to go hand in hand. Mode transport. And then crypto IPsec profile, DMV VPN underscore profile. Set transform set ESP AES to be six five SHA five twelve. Awesome. Then we put that on tunnel. Full. <clears throat> Excuse me, tunnel. Tunnel protect protection. Uh, IPsec profile. DMVPN underscore profile. We're missing something, aren't we? We're missing the key. Crypto ISA camp. Uh, key is dmvpn underscore psk address 169.254.100.5 okay good so now boom we should everything should come up first uh show crypt we know the tunnel is up the gre tunnel show crypto ip sec sa Good. Uh, no traffic yet, right? But let's try to generate some. 5105 source P0. Did I use the wrong address here? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Show run interface T0. I did. IP NHRP map. Okay, we're going to move that. And then we're, let's do a shut, no shut. Tunnels are change state to reset. Okay, IP address 15101, no, IPMTU, IP and HRP authentication. Hmm. Interesting. No says found. Okay, we have an issue here. Show run. Probably had the wrong address. That's correct. IP and HRP next up server. That's good. Okay. 5101. Okay.
No shut. This, uh, this could be bugginess. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull all this out. And put it back in. We saw this the other day. We had so much trouble with the tunnel. We had a lot of trouble with the tunnel. Okay, so that's gone. We'll have to put that back. All right, let's try to put it back in. Boom. Change state to down. Change state to reset. Interstate T, uh, interface T0, change state to reset. All right, let's back up. Let's back up. Let's, uh, let's remove the encryption. Do that on both sides. No tunnel protection. Okay, now it came up. All right. This could be just an uh, issue of order. This is good. It's good we're, that this happens because it's a learning, learning experience in terms of troubleshooting. You know, break, break the uh, complexities down. Make it as simple as you can. Introduce the complexities back in until you kind of resolve the issue, right? So let's go fix EIGRP and make it, see if that starts working. Uh, DMVPN, AF interface, T0, uh, actually address family, IPv4, uni, autonomous system 100, AF interface, T0, no passive. Okay, so now we should get an EIGRP adjacency. Up, down, time, never, HRP. Okay, what does this mean? Okay, peer NBMA address, peer tunnel, address, state, up, down, time, never, static, CTS capable. So it has never been up. Uh, let's do this. 0 0.5 source T0. Hmm, it's not coming up. We must be missing something. So let's look at our tunnel interfaces here. IP address, no IP, uh, MTU authentication. Let's debug crypto IP, no, not crypto. Let's just see what happens here. Oh, net identifier number. There we go. IP NHRP network ID of one. Now we should be good. Okay, we still got an issue here. Let's see if it's over router five. Ah, uh, this is where it's missing. That's where it's missing, okay. Um, debug. In HRP,
oh, in is network ID zero, out is network ID of one. So this is still not using the correct zero shut, no shut. MAC address, interface in null. Hmm. IP and HRP map. What are we missing here? Okay, we have authentication. NHRP cannot map to NBMA, cache entry not found. Could not map 15102 NBMA, cache entry not found. Incompatible destination, NBMA unknown for tunnel zero. Next top server, 15105. Okay, let me take a look here, folks. IP and HRP, network ID, tunnel mode, GRE multipoint, incompatible destination. Does this interface not exist? One six nine two five four one hundred dot one. Ah, okay. BNHRP. Is this phase two? So what I'm looking at here is this configuration, phase two EIGRP, no next top self, multicast dynamic. Okay, that looks right. And then uh, this is supposed to be, oh, okay. All right. So this is a different configuration I'm not accustomed to, but on route, on the, um, this needs to be IP NHRP map multicast 150.1.0.5. Um, yeah, there we go. No IP NHRP map. Okay, we need to take this out. This needs to actually be pointing to the hub. Okay. And then the next tops are okay. Yeah, that's what that's what we needed. No peer data updated. All right. Peer static mapping one slash thirty two. Yep. Still do not have reachability though. That works. Show run interface T0. I need to take um, this out, I think.
Sending control packet. Okay, I don't think we got that before. Capsulation succeeded. Yay. All right. All right, something is still wrong. Show run interface T0. Tunnel mode GRE multipoint. Let's debug on this side. Could not map to NBMA, cache entry not found. Still getting this null. Could not map, cache entry not found. Capsulation failed. Attempting through interface C0 via destination. IP route lookup, IDB den ID match, yielded tunnel zero. Uh, can we do a clear? All right, I'm kind of stuck here, so I'm going to look at the partial, uh, not the whole lab. All right, router one. Okay, router one. Show run interface T0. IP address, yes, IP MTU, IP NHRP authentication, IP NHRP map multicast. Ah, that's the problem. Should have known that too because of um, generally these map statements. The first keyword is the overlay, and the second keyword is um, the MBMA address. That should have given it away. See if that's all I'm missing here. Okay, still don't have it. Okay, tunnel source. Tunnel mode Jerry multipoint. Tunnel key two. Okay, that all looks right now. So now let's check router five, see what we're missing there. IP address, IPMTU, IP NHRP authentication, multicast dynamic. Okay, all right. This is throwing it off here. All right. Tunnel source. Tunnel mode. Tunnel key. Okay. Okay, everything looks good now.
Yeah, everything looks right. IP address 15105. IPMTU, IPNHRP authentication. Map multicast dynamic. Network ID, TCP adjust. Source, tunnel mode, tunnel key. Yep, looks right. And router one. IP address, IPMTU, authentication, map, map multicast, NHRP network ID, PNHRP NHS, I guess this kind of goes to show that really you should just copy and paste <laughs> from the config. I've still got nothing. All right, let's do this. Show run interface T0. This is basically what happened yesterday. Oh, is crypto being applied? It shouldn't be. And then this is our router five. Okay, interesting that the crypto turns off even though it's not applied. And that could be a bug or something too. We don't care about ERGRP or anything else right now. Now we just want to get these tunnels, the DMVPN up. Okay. All right, tunnel is up. Yes, it is up. Good. Ping, one, five, one, zero. See how buggy that is? I had to take that out and put it back in on both routers to get that to work. It's kind of bogus. All right, let's figure EIGRP now. Um, and we're going to say... If interface uh, address family, IPv4 uni, autonomous system 200, uh, 100. If interface T0, no passive. And over here, router EIGRP DMVPN, address family, um, IPv4 uni AU 100 T0 no passive a no split and no next hop self okay so we should get EIGRP adjacency now No neighbors yet. Okay, our network statement is still there. We want to advertise the loopbacks. And over here. I have to take this out as well. We have a network statement here. Okay, now looking at my EIGRP configuration. So it's saying the only difference I see here. Ah, uh, okay, that that makes sense. All right. Address family IPv4 uni AU 100 uh, network. Okay. 
Now we should get an adjacency. Network. Boom. Okay. And we have adjacency. Now we want to put on encryption. Interface T0, tunnel, protection, IPsec, profile, DMVPN, profile. Good to go. Uh, not sure what happened there. Paste. Gonna let it go. It's like a title yesterday. Just let it go, right? Um, old time expired. I understand. Tunnel protection. IPsec profile. And we're back up. Good. Okay. And it's just a matter of configuring this on other routers, right? So let's do tell net viral four. Um, let's see. Interface T0, IP address 45102. Um, IP MT1400, IP TCP adjust MSS 1360. IP NHRP. Uh, Authentication. IP NHRP map five one zero five. Uh, multicast. Wait, 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 wait. Map. Nope, I did not want you to do that, computer. There you go. The NHRP, NHS, and tunnel source interface J0. No interface. Tunnel key of two. Tunnel mode Jerry multipoint. Good, good, good. Uh, tunnel will not come up yet because expecting encryption. So we're going to encrypt. So IP, uh, ISA camp policy 10, uh, encryption AES 128, right? Yes. Ash, uh, 2 I 6 authentication pre-share group, uh, 16. Crypto ISA camp key. Um, VPN PSK address crypto IPsec transform set SHA 512 and then ESP SHA 512 HMAC mode transport Set transform set and interface T zero tunnel protection okay we should now have reachability <clears throat> and now let's do uh, let's show where we we should have spoke to spoke now. Phase two. So if I do ping 15105, that should work and it does. Now if we go to tunnel to router one, boom, we can also reach there. Even better, we're gonna put in an EIGRP. Edge family, IPv4 uni, autonomous system 100, AF interface, default, passive, 
interface. If interface tunnel zero, no passive. Network one five one zero zero. Sweet. <clears throat> okay, so now Okay, so we only have an adjacency with router five. Um, 50.1.1.1. Hmm. How do we resolve that address, I wonder? Okay, it does say router one. Show DMVPN. Okay. So we have a... NHRP peers is... Okay. Notice the peer in BMA is .5. ENT, what is that? Number of NHRP entries with the same NBMA peer, too. Okay, so this is the same peer here, the same peer here, up, up. Okay, D, dynamic, S, static, right. Makes sense. So we don't have an EIGRP adjacency, but we do, do learn EIP, EIGRP routes, and it does show the next hop being the, sp the other spoke. Nice. Now let's go ahead and do router three this time, though, just for time. We're just going to copy-paste, folks. Sorry. I'm going to get uh, easy on you here. And that is correct for that. Okay. And then let's do crypto. That's all going to be the same. Boy, that's a lot faster, isn't it? And then we'll do EIGRP as well, which should all be the same as well. Yeah. Nice. Okay, now show uh, ping. 150.1.2.2, source L0. Hmm. Is this a copy-paste thing? Show, show, well, let's see. Show IP and HRP. All right, we just have router five. Ping 15102. Well, let's do five first. Aha, we're missing something. All right, good. Let's troubleshoot. Let's see where the issue is. Show crypto. Ah. Uh, So we have no crypto to show run. We must have an issue here, right? There's the policy, authentication pre-share, the key, transform set. Uh, we haven't put it on the tunnel. Or have we? Show run interface T0. We have not. Tunnel, protect, IPsec, profile, uh, because I copied it from Notepad and not from the actual configuration. Okay. Well, at least we found it. Okay, we've got that. Now we should have this. 
So we do show IP route EIGRP, show DMVPN. Good, good, good. Show router EIGRP, show IP EIGRP neighbors. I'm, I imagine, I'm just going to postulate here that DMVPN phase three is going to involve um, routing protocol adjacency over the tunnels. That's what my guess is. Okay, good. So we've got that. Uh, all we need to do is router four. And first we'll do a tunnel and we're going to add here um, tunnel protection. Add that. So we should add crypto first, huh? Yeah, let's add crypto first. Think about it. What would be the ideal order here? Crypto. Then we want to add the tunnel interface. That's the only thing we need. Isn't that awesome? That's the only thing we need to change. See, it'll be real easy to knock out a whole bunch of tunnels. Then EIGRP. Easy stuff. Nice. That easy. So now router five should have. Um, yep. HRP. Boom. Show IP Ceph. Show IP Ceph. Uh, 150.1.2.2. Yeah, tunnel zero. Nice. Okay, so I'm going to look at the key. I think that's all we need here. Okay, let's look at the verification. Um, if we verified that. Yeah, so we still have here show IP and HRP. Okay, we have multiple here. Oh, the trace route. Yeah, let's do a trace route. So if we do trace route, um, 150.1.2.2 source L0. Okay, it's saying it doesn't need to flow through the hub. Which makes sense. Note that now that a direct IPsec tunnel is formed, what is it? Okay, so my configuration, it matches. It matches what's in here in the workbook, right? But I'm seeing a different result. Yeah, so in router one, for example, Okay, let's see. Show IP and HRP. Okay, that's correct. All right, that's right. Okay, show crypto IPsec SA or ISACAMP. I do have two tunnels. Cool. So I do have two actual um, encryption tunnels. I'm seeing that now. 
And now if we do a trace route, this is where I'm getting different output. Yeah, this is different. It's still flowing through the hub. Show IP EIGRP neighbors. That's the same as what's in the workbook. Yeah, but this this is not different. It's still going through. It's still going through the hub, at least in the trace route. Strange. All right. Well, again, uh, I think there's probably code differences. I don't know. The, my configuration is exactly the same as what is in the workbook, so I'm going to go with it. Um, yeah. All right, folks. We're gonna. That's that's gonna wrap it up for phase two with the IGRP. Uh, let's now look at OSPF. And for this one, fortunately, since we got the lab is up and running, we have our tunnels up. All we have to do is remove the routing protocol and just put in um, our changes for OSPF. So, and there's an example here in this document. So, in Peter's document, he talks about phase two. There's phase two EIGRP. And a lot of explanation here. I'm going to compare what I, my output to this uh, later. But let's look at uh, OSPF. This document is not easy to navigate. Phase 1 OSPF. Phase two EIGRP. Okay, he doesn't have an example here. Okay, that's all right. We'll find one in the documentation. So that is under security, of course. Secure connectivity and DMVPN. No, they don't have, probably do not have a configuration example for each. Yeah, come on, uh, documentation, come on, man. Let's go back and see if we find it under OSPF. Configuration guides. Man, come on. Of course not. So where in the heck do you go? All right. We will leverage what we can find out in the workbook. So first we're going to remove EIGRP on all the routers. And we're going to do OSPF. Um, let's look at the requirements in depth here. The differences are with OSPF is enable OSPF area zero, of course. Advertise loopbacks. Configure so that next hop value of OSPF advertise. 
spokes is not modified. Configure so that next top value of OSPF routes advertised for each spokes is not modified. So let's think about that. If you have uh, in OSPF and you're advertising the links, you're going to flood your area with your LSAs. Yeah, I don't know that this is an issue here with OSPF. I think we just have to ensure the correct network types, right? So let's do that. Let's start with router five, router OSPF one. Um, we're gonna say, Um, network 1.0.0 area 0 and we want to define the network type so interface um, I think the only difference really here between phase 1 and phase 2 is a tunnel type the OSPF routing, I think, is going to be pretty much the same, with the exception that on the spokes, uh, no, that, that won't change either. So if we go interface tunnel 0, IP OSPF network, it's going to be point to multipoint. That's the difference. We already did this yesterday, actually, because I made a mistake. On the spokes, I put point to multipoint. I should have done point to point. In fact, let's do that now. Just to illustrate the difference. So we're going to go here, router 1. Well, we can't do that now because of our tunnel interface configuration. But we need, just need to IP OSPF network type point to multipoint. Same on all the routers. Uh, let's go back, show, run, section, OSPF. And then interface T0, IP, OSPF, network, point to multipoint. If there's something else subtle I need to do, I don't know what it is because I cannot really find documentation on that. We'll do a Google search since, uh, yeah, we got our adjacencies. Show IP OSPF neighbor. Yeah. Uh, not router one. What's going on with him? There we go. Okay, show IP OSPF neighbor, just router 5. But if we do show IP route OSPF, uh, okay, so here's the crux of the issue. We want, um, this is recursing to router 5. We want it to recurse to router, so how do we do that? I would think what's happening here is a recursion is using, um, let's look at the database. So if we say, for example, 150.1.1.1, show IP OSPF database. router link connected to a stub network 150.1.1.1 right
link connected to another router. So if I do show IP OSPF database, um, self originate. I need to use two as an example. Okay. So I'm recursing to this. Router interface address 15102. Neighboring router ID. These are my links, and the only link I have attached to me is this. So if I do, for example, show IP OSPF database router 50.1.5.5, then here's the link to me. So... How do we do that? That I do not know, and I cannot find. We're just going to have to look, folks. Ah, uh, network broadcast. I uh, still don't understand how that's going to fix it, but let's see. Interface T0, IP OSPF network broadcast. NIP OSPF priority 0. Is it broadcast on all the links? It is. Okay. That would be different than uh, phase one. When you think about it, though, this is a lot like when I lab for the CCMP, I did OSPF over frame re relay. Network is broadcast. No, not be OSPF priority zero. That's right. Um, Okay, party 255. So now, show IP OSPF neighbor. Okay, we're still negotiating here. DR other. No, that's right. Still two way though. X start. Okay, it's taking it a minute. Let's see if there's anything else we're missing here. There we go. It took it a while. Okay, good. So we have our neighbors and a router five. Okay, full. 
But Okay, now this has changed. So that makes sense, I guess. Because <clears throat> when we have we're we're now recursing using a network uh, an LSA type 2 right instead of just the LSA type 1s where we see that uh we have to go through router 5 through links on router 5 and its links to the other routers to get there it's basically hub spoke from the OSPF database point of view but now we're getting LSA type 2s and we're able to rec and basically the LSA type 2s is showing us the graph and it's showing us that in reality router 1 is on the same segment network segment the network LSA type as router 2 so now I can recurse directly to him so if I do ping 150.1.2.2 source t0, no, 0. Yeah. So let's do, uh, show it in the database. Show IP OSPF database network. Well, let me see what it looks like. Show IP OSPF database. Now we have this type 2. Show IP OSPF database network attached router there it is okay thank you lab you helped me uh and that really goes back to knowledge of ospf i guess but this is a really good good uh, use case for it. so now if i do trace route it still shows us going through router five both in ospf and eigrp but I'm, I've already come to, to terms with that. I'm at peace with it. If we do, though, the uh, show IP, show crypto. Yeah, we formed a tunnel. If we do router 3. On the fly, we build uh, a crypto tunnel. Or do we? Oh, this is two way. Yeah, this is different than what we see. Um, Yeah, this is different than the output in the lab. Okay, which I'm going to look at later, investigate later. Um, no doubt we do have a, a phase two GRE tunnel for sure. Uh, if we do show IP and HRP, as we can see here, we have, um, oh, that's cool, flags used temporary. Um, they're dynamic, right? They're dynamic tunnels. Two and three. We see the difference with OSPF and what we need to do there. Um, so good. I think that I think that's all all we need. I'm not can't really do any uh, packet captures here, folks, because we're using IPsec on these tunnels, and we wouldn't be able to see much anyway. Can't see the payload and the encapsulation. But uh, good labs, good labs. Let's fill out the worksheet here. Obviously, you know, there are parts of that where I was a little lost, but that's okay. I think I I'm, I'm understand it better now. I'm going to review it on my own off stream. Uh, and obviously, we're going to practice these labs again. This is not the last time you will see this lab on the Land Tamer stream because, you know, this needs to be repeatable. And so our, our, you notice our date shifted to the 31st. Interesting. Let's see what happens now. Not that that's really important. You know, this is my schedule for... Um,
You know, I don't know that this is right because let's look at our formula here. Equals today. Yes, yeah, something's missing here. Plus lab days. So this is today minus E4 completed. This is total. This is completed, so this is remaining. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure about this. This is remaining days. Today minus E4. No, I think this is today minus G, what is that? G2. Okay, that's more like it. I don't know what that lab days means. E4. What is E4? Yeah, I was using the wrong figure there. That makes sense. So this is the first day I've started. Yeah, so this is today minus this number of remaining labs, assuming, assuming one a day. Okay, yeah, that was that was worrying me there because that was not moving at all. That's remaining, yeah. Uh, the basis of this is one one a day, one lab a day. Lab days. Yeah, makes no sense. This could be um, today minus what's remaining. Yeah, that's what that's what that needs to be. Yeah, I'm not sure what that means, so I'm going to delete it. Oh, ah, okay. Now I see. This is used to calculate uh, months and years remaining. Or how many days I've been labbing total. Right, right, right. Lab days total. Days I've labbed. There we go. Much better. Okay. I've been labbing for 228 days, is what that means. So this is when I, I'm projected to finish. Nice. All right. Thanks so much for tuning in, folks. We've got two left in DMVPN. So this may take us for the rest of the week with a little review. I'm not sure before we start multicast. But we've got DMVPN Phase 3 with the Edge RP. This is uh, more common right uh, deployment um i also did yeah and then we got vrf aware dmvpn so then it's on the multicast this actually this is a major milestone here because this will essentially complete the um this is going to complete ipv4 unicast labs IPv4 unicast routing. Major milestone. We're done 50, we've done 57% of the labs in the book. Still ways to go. So uh, we're going to keep plugging along. Thanks for tuning in, folks. This is going to end the stream for tonight. Um, again, um, I'm going to post this on YouTube. Follow me on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Discord. 
And, of course, uh, we're here basically sometime between 7 and 9 p.m., Monday through Thursday and on weekends. So uh, thanks for watching, and happy labbing, happy learning. See you soon.